been amazing what's been done in a very short period of time on Puerto Rico. There's never been a piece of land that we've known that was so devastated. The bridges are down. The uh, telecommunications uh, was non-existent, and it's in very, very bad shape. The electrical grid, as you know, was totally destroyed. Uh, but we've gotten uh, tremendous amounts of food and water and lots of other things, supplies, generally speaking, uh, on the island. So we're going to be going tomorrow morning first thing. President Trump once again bragging about the federal response to the disaster in Puerto Rico. That tone a lot different than his tweet storms that we saw over this past weekend. Here's perhaps the most inflammatory one. Quote, the mayor of San Juan, who was very complimentary only a few days ago, has now been told by Democrats that you must be nasty to Trump. Such poor leadership ability by the mayor of San Juan and others in Puerto Rico who are not able to get their workers to help. They want everything to be done for them when it should be a community effort. 10,000 federal workers now on island doing a fantastic job. That was just one of the nearly 20 tweets about Puerto Rico. President blaming the quote-unquote fake news for making up the story that things aren't going well down there. He again pointed out that the mayor of San Juan is complaining, his words, saying the administration's response has been outstanding. And he did actually acknowledge that the people there are in fact suffering. Now he's been targeting the mayor because she said this while commenting on the director of Homeland Security saying this is a quote unquote good news story because of all the help that Puerto Rico is getting. Here, Mayor Carmen Cruz. Maybe from where she's standing, it's a good news story. When you're drinking from a creek, it's not a good news story. When you don't have food for a baby, it's not a good news story. All of this coming on the heels of President Trump's comments this past Friday when he again criticized the island, but not before giving us a geography lesson. This is an island surrounded by water, big water, ocean water. We're closely coordinated with the territorial and local governments which are totally and unfortunately unable to handle this catastrophic crisis on their own. The electrical grid and other infrastructure were already in very, very poor shape. Many elected officials from our area, they are visiting the island to see the devastation with their own two eyes. Democratic New York Assemblyman Marcos Crespo, one of them, he represents the Bronx. Earlier today, Andrew sat down with the legislator. Assemblyman Crespo, you were born in Puerto Rico. You're the chairman of the Puerto Rican Hispanic Task Force on the Assembly, and you went with Governor Cuomo to Puerto Rico last week. What did you see when you were there? How bad is it, and what are the greatest needs right now? It was a very emotional visit, um, Puerto Rico. This, this whole crisis is very personal to me, like for so many of my colleagues in government and, and other community uh, residents. But being on the ground and seeing the impact, seeing the gravity of the devastation, uh, it was clear that this was going to be a long-term effort that was going to be needed, lots of resources, and that Puerto Rican officials would need a lot of help to get the job done because it was a complete and utter devastation of infrastructure, communities completely uh, flooded and underwater, and just every one of the systems that was vital to, to helping to clean up afterwards was, was down. Uh, water pumps and uh, energy infrastructure, no electricity, no running water in most of the island, communication systems. I mean, it was just utter devastation. Was, was it your sense that this was a, a, a massive pending life or death crisis? Very clear from, from the minute we arrived. And we, we were there Friday right after uh, the storm had, had hit. Um, but it was very clear and obvious. We, we did a helicopter ride. We saw some of it from, from above and did a convoy as well. And uh, at the command center, we saw the desperation. There were families seeking refuge. There were folks on the side of the road with their bags in hand looking for a place. Um, it was clear that this was a monumental storm that had created, you know, devastating effects and, and needed a monumental response. You were there just a couple of days after the storm had hit. What had you seen at that time of the federal response? Did it look as though there was assistance in place? Did it look to be remotely enough? Uh, no, there were uh, there was personnel from, from the from Puerto Rico's government officials, and there was some FEMA personnel there as well, that some of them had been there since Irma, so they were already on the ground um, assisting, but not, 
there, was yet, there wasn't yet the mobilization of federal troops and resources. They were still talking about the plan that they had to help those communities, but we've long learned since um, they have not had the resources, the personnel, or the equipment in order to execute that plan. And from what you saw on the ground compared to what you had seen on television following storm efforts in Texas or storm efforts in Florida, was this appreciably a smaller response? Did it seem like we were less prepared? There is no question about it that uh, this has not received the attention that it deserved. Puerto Rico, for many of us, this has been a long-term issue and advocacy to make sure that we're not treated like second-class citizens. And unfortunately, this is the biggest example of that yet. Um, in every other community, immediate action was taken, immediate response was, was given, and, and every effort to facilitate that response was made available, including waivers of the Jones Act and things like that. And it's unfortunate that we have to beg and plead while families are st struggling uh, to get the same attention. You know, it, not trying to minimize the human suffering, but, but we are trying to get a sense of the reality as well and we heard from the president over the weekend blaming the mayor of San Juan saying people in Puerto Rico want everything done for them I'm curious your reaction to his comments and what you think the reaction on the ground in Puerto Rico will be or has been look I think the president needs to get off Twitter I think the president needs to focus on getting his job done I think he has to be responsible for American lives wherever they are um, throughout our country and abroad and and I think he needs to realize that Puerto Rico they are American citizens, they are part of this country. He says, stop worrying about what's being said about him and, and the perception of it. Every life lost after this storm, forget the storm itself and the damage that it caused, but every life lost, lost after that, that blood is on the president's hands. But you know, he, he did dedicate the President's Cup golf trophy to the victims in Puerto Rico. That's he might as well have crushed us out in his Twitter account because I don't know what more insulting it can get that he's in a golf course while people are struggling to survive, including my own family. Is your, have you heard from your family? Do you know I, if they're, if they're I safe? I spoke to my mom for the first time uh, yesterday morning. Oh. Um, she uh, is okay physically. She's running short on supplies. There's a, a sense of desperation in town. Um, they're starting to see a little bit more of the mobilization, but it took, it took well over a week uh, for things to begin to move when they should have been moving even before the storm, there should have been preparation. Assemblyman, this leads me to the question that, that none of us can answer because we can't get inside the, the president's head, but it, why? Why is this response, why is this reaction so much less than we've seen in other places? There, people have talked about business interests because of the debt crisis and looking to privatize the island's electric system. Some people have said, well, he just sees brown people speaking in Spanish and doesn't care. It, it just incompetence. It, what's, what's your sense? In my mind, there's two things. There's utter racism on his part. He's been very much anti-Latino throughout his campaign and throughout his presidency. We continue to see that now. This is brown also, people speaking Spanish. He just uh, doesn't care. Uh, he does not. I don't think he understands or cares or has shown uh, as president. Uh, whether he believes it personally or not, he's definitely playing the role, a character of a conservative who does not seem to care for the lives of people of color. And I think there's also uh, that he's shown a tendency to only care about the interest of the 1% of the rich. The fact that he even brought up the debt crisis when he should be bringing up people who are without homes, without energy, without food, without water, American citizens, and he's more concerned about having a conversation about a debt repayment tells us everything we need to know about this president and his administration. On the off chance that he's seeing this interview and let's hope that he's actually focused on the response to both this and Las Vegas. What would, what would you say to the president? Get the job done. You have a responsibility and every life lost is on your hands. You need to focus on getting the job done, respond to the needs of American citizens, help rebuild Puerto Rico the right way, put aside your financial interest and your financial concerns of your buddies in the golf course, and understand that these are lives that are at risk, that continue to be at risk, and every day that we minimize the, the, the concern uh, is another day that we put them at risk, and that includes uh, hundreds of thousands, millions of American lives, and, and people abroad, people here in the States uh, who do vote and care who will not take kindly to, to, to this uh, lack of respect and attention. The president is scheduled to go to Puerto Rico tomorrow, at least as we record this uh, late in the morning on Monday morning. How do you think he'll be received in Puerto Rico? How should he be received by the people of Puerto Rico? Look, right now, I think uh, something the mayor said is very important, the mayor of San Juan. Uh, we need to focus on the recovery. We need to focus on, on helping people right now. Um, I, it, it is my hope that he will see and understand firsthand that this is worse than it's just being reported, that this is more in-depth than that, that what he believes, that this is not good news, uh, that this is not going to be a quick and easy effort, uh, that we need to put more resources on the ground. And I hope he understands that uh, 
Puerto Ricans deserve better than what they've received so far. And when he sees it, it is my hope that he will come back and lead an effort in, in Washington for Congress to be able to put a package together that really responds to the needs and does not shortchange uh, the financial needs of Puerto Rico to move forward, to rebuild, and to get their economy back on track. Assemblyman Marcus Crespo, thank you for a few minutes for the insight, and best of luck with your family and all of your friends who are still in Puerto Rico. Thank you. Appreciate it. Coming up next, Senator Bob Menendez's corruption trial, it continues in federal court today. And the New Jersey Democrat, they're fighting the charges. And he also spoke with us about Puerto Rico and that mass shooting in Las Vegas.